make the most of this night Come on, baby, take my hand And we don't need to do the things we don't want to do What's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. Another beautiful day down here in the Atlantic City area. So I'm gonna take a walk around to the dock and show you guys the water on a sunny, beautiful day like today. 55 degrees, so much better than the last video when it was cloudy and not so warm. So it is a beautiful day here as you can see. Look at the water, gorgeous view. The sun is finally shining. I've been here a week and it has not been sunny one day out of the last week. So I finally can enjoy this with the sun. Look at the water, such a beautiful and relaxing sight. But today I'm gonna to be headed to New York City to the New York Auto Show and I'm also putting on my summer tires. Finally, the 315s are going back on. I'm taking the crappy Pirellis off the car and I can finally get some traction in the Hellcat because let's face it, 800 horsepower and 275s don't match. So as you can see, it's a beautiful day and such a nice area. I just need a boat to put on that slip so I can go trolling through the river here and I think that would make for a really nice video. Absolutely amazing view. Now, as you can see, the Hellcat is spotless since I washed it yesterday. However, the hood has a little bit of white streaks on it from the soap. I do have to use VLR or vinyl treatment to clean it and moisturize it as it does dry out and soap tends to leave residue. But as you can see, it looks so much better than it did before I cleaned it. It was so dirty and you can see right now it's spotless. It's that time, guys, you know you like it. It is time for a cold start and then I'm off to put the summer tires on and to go to the New York Auto Show. That's American muscle right there. You guys know you love it. Time to hit the road. The New York International Auto Show awaits me. I'm finally making it on the last day. So I'm finally here. It's time to put the summer tires on. I have them in storage as I'm in the middle of moving so all my stuff is put up. But now it's time to get the stupid Pirellis off and put on the Continental summer tires. One last look at the 275s. Here's the difference between a 275 and a 315. It's a huge difference. Better tires and much more contact patch on the ground. 275s are not enough for a Hellcat. These are the tires I recommend for everybody who's running scat packs or Hellcats. 315 Continental Extreme Contact Sports on a 10 and a half inch wheel or 11. That's what I recommend. 275 is not enough.
It looks so much better with the 315s on. What do you guys think? So beefy in the rear end. I absolutely love it. Now it's time to go to the New York Auto Show. So right behind me, we have the Pagani Ahira. This is just a work of art. And I never knew that Mercedes actually makes the engines that go into production for the Pagani. This thing will do 217 miles an hour and has 750 horsepower. This is insane. And the thing is, it only weighs 2,600 pounds. So if you figure 2,600 pounds is about 1,000 pounds lighter than the Corvette C7, which only has 650 horsepower. So just imagine, it's kind of in the ballpark of a ZR1 or the new ZR1, except this is a lot better of a machine. This is engineered perfection. It's Pagani. I didn't even know Pagani was still making cars as he was getting out of the game a while ago, at least so I thought. Let's get an up close look at the Pagani. Look at the carbon fiber all over the car. There's carbon fiber everywhere from the splitters, the canards, the side skirts, the mirrors, the spoiler, the entire roof is carbon fiber. It's absolutely mind blowing of uh, the craftsmanship that Pagani has put into this car right here. You can see right there, it's a Mercedes engine, 750 horsepower, 217 miles per hour. That's insane. So much to see here at the New York Auto Show. So little time. We're at the Brembo booth. Take a look at these calipers right here. It's a really awesome color green. These are the Brembos right here for the Trackhawk and Jeep SRTs, except the SRTs have the red Brembos and the yellow comes on the Trackhawk. But this is the Brembo six piston caliper. Now when it's off the vehicle, it looks totally different than when it's on the car. You can see they're massive. But the Brembo representative right beside me showed me that this is a 10 piston caliper right here, which is just monstrous compared to the Hellcat. This is off the Panamera Hybrid 10 piston caliper. Absolutely insane. Talk about stopping power right here. So check this out guys. This is the Pontiac Trans Am Firebird right here. They're not in production. They're very special made vehicle right here. It looks absolutely insane. So we're here, I'm gonna to talk to Brendan about these amazing Trans Am Super Duties that they're building, and they're taking stripped down Camaro chassis and building the entire car as if Pontiac had never went out of production. So Brendan's gonna give us the lowdown. What's going on, Brendan? We 
Hi, my name is Brendan Draper. I'm the general manager of Trans Am Worldwide in Tosca, Florida. We produce modern Trans Ams based on the 2016, 17, and 18 Camaro chassis. Uh, major differences between what we do now and what was done in the past. All the body panels are hand laid carbon fiber here in the United States. Awesome. Uh, we upgraded the engine by sending an LT1 motor to Joey Arrington's shop in Charlotte, North Carolina. He's boring stroking it, sleeving it, putting a girdle on it. When it comes out, it's 455 cubic inches. We put a 2.9 liter blower on it. Now the car makes 1,000 horsepower, 1,000 pound feet of torque. Wow, 1,000 horsepower. How much torque? 1,000 pound feet of torque. 1,000 horsepower, 1,000 pound feet of torque. And you can get these cars for? Starts at 107. 107. $107,000 for a 1,000 horsepower Firebird. Now let that sink in. The ZR1 is almost $120,000. You can just get a Firebird Trans Am from you guys for less money. So that's what I would do if I had a choice between the Corvette or one of these bad boys. This is what I would buy. Thank you so much, Brendan, for uh, talking with me. Check it out, transamworldwide.com. You can place your order if you want one. give you guys a little history lesson on the Ford GT. Back in the 60s, there was a very famous racer named Dan Gurney who was going to race and Ferrari was going to work on supercars with Ford. However, at the last minute, Ferrari ditched the contract. So what did Ford do? They engineered the Ford GT to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans to beat Ferrari at their own game and came in first, second, and third place. Now for the 50th anniversary in 2015, what did they do? They released the Ford GT yet again, winning 24-hour Le Mans, beating Ferrari, Mercedes, Porsche, Lamborghini, and as well as Pagani and every other car manufacturer you can think of. Two times in less than a century, Ford have won 24-hour Le Mans, beating Ferrari at their own game twice. And if you guys didn't know that, they did have a contract with Ford in the 60s and they disintegrated that contract last minute on Ford, but Dan Gurney drove the Ford GT to beat Ferrari and won all first three places at 24 Hours of Le Mans. So this right here is paying respects to the original Ford GT and it's better in every way. So let's take a walk around. So right behind me, we got the 2019 Mustang Bullet, 480 horsepower, which is up 20 from the regular GT, six piston front Brembos, as well as a bigger radiator and improved suspension. The Bullet is an icon and it's back yet again. It is an absolutely phenomenal color. It's the classic Bullet green that all the Mustang Bullets have been. Same style wheels over the last 20 years and it looks amazing. Let's take an up close look at the Mustang Bullet that was announced just a few short months ago at the Chicago Auto Show. We've also added a new sport with our interior and exterior style like that. It's assist technologies, making it look so forward. Water, Heather, and I... So, of course, I'm here checking out the Dodge booth at the New York Auto Show. We got the 392 Daytona right behind me. Absolutely love it. We're going to walk over and look at the Demon. Like, I've already reviewed the Demon and driven it, but I'm going to take a close look to see what color they have. They have a red Demon here, which, in my opinion, is one of the best colors you can possibly get. I've already talked about it in my review multiple times, but uh, basically you got a 2.9 liter blower on a reinforced Hellcat engine uh, running 808 horsepower on 93 octane. If you're gonna run the 100 octane plus, you're gonna be getting 840 horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, quarter mile times 965. Absolutely amazing. You're gonna have to have the skinny tires up front in order to get that kind of lift to run 965, but the trans brake is unbelievably awesome to use and very easy on the contrary to what most people have said. You just have to hold the left and the right paddle while holding the brake and then holding down the gas and setting your RPMs. You let go of the brake, you let go of the paddles, and this thing will shoot you into oblivion as you hit zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, which is nothing but pure awesomeness. I've driven it and I absolutely loved every minute of it. That review will be up later on in the week. Yeah, so technically you get two sets of rear tires because 
driving on the drag, you're the only one that's parked by the sneak up. This is the 2018 Dodge Demon. So back in 2014, we introduced the Hellcats as our fastest production vehicle Dodge ever produced with a 774 seconds and topping speeds of over 200 miles per hour. We're not only dominating the streets, but also the road courses. Right behind me is the Durango SRT Mopar Edition, which has blacked out SRT badging, just like I have in my Durango, as well as the hood being painted black and Mopar badging. It even has Mopar stitching in the seat. This Durango SRT is pretty damn rad, if you ask me. Speakers and 18 speaker hard and current radio system. So you can see some differences in the engine versus the Hellcat, of course, that massive. The one you really want to hear about is under the hood, and that is our LT5 engine. Now this is a 6.2 liter push rod V8. It has a 2.65 liter four lobe Eaton supercharger on it. It comes out to 755 horsepower and 715 pound feet of torque. And again, it's not a terribly heavy car. It is the loudest Corvette we've ever built. So we also built in a stealth mode on it because your neighbors may want you to have that. So I'm here with Clayton of Kia and we're going to talk about the brand new Stinger, which in my opinion is competing with BMW, Mercedes, yeah, and absolutely. Lexus, and Infiniti. Yeah, absolutely. So we're super excited about it. It's obviously Kia's first ever sports car. This right here has uh, two different engine options. The larger one being a 3.3 liter engine, twin turbo V6 with 365 horsepower. You have a 0 to 60 time of 4.7 seconds, which is faster than a Porsche Panamera. Uh, it comes standard awesome. in rear wheel drive with an all wheel drive option as well. Oh, the that's price awesome. point you're looking at 32, fully loaded, all the way up to about 52,000. Awesome. Now, with this one right here, we have a sports package on it with a four low exhaust, uh, winglets, um, cold intake system, carbon fiber. And you can actually get this kit as is at a dealer. Wow. So that's pretty exciting. They're How much really is it for this add on package? Because this is just brilliant right Absolutely. Here. So this package is around $6,000 kind of in that realm. Okay. So uh, if you want to do a fully loaded one with the all wheel drive, the twin turbo, comes with the heads up display, all kinds of options. Plus this, you'd be sitting closer to about 58,000 as this one sits. That's a really amazing sedan right there. And I love my sedans. I got a, a charger. Oh yeah. So four door. I like the four doors. Yeah. And then Kia released uh, the teaser of the Stinger. I was absolutely in love with it. I still haven't reviewed one yet for the channel, but I've got to yeah. do that real soon. Cool. So. Absolutely, man. Well, thanks awesome. for stopping by. We thanks so much, Clayton, for absolutely. talking with me. Have a good one. You too. Such an amazing vehicle. 167 is the top speed, 167 miles an hour, 360 horsepower. Absolutely awesome. Kia has stepped up their game big time with these performance packages. And here's another Stinger GT right here, all wheel drive. What's upstairs? Right behind me is the new Bugatti Chiron, which has a 16-cylinder engine, and that's right, quad turbos. That's insane, producing 1,400 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds. Now, to put that into perspective, though, the Dodge Demon will do 2.3, 0 to 60 for about a fifth of the price, not taking anything away from Bugatti, but when you think about dollars and cents and speed, that gives you just a little bit of insight. Now, the top speed on the Bugatti is over 400 kilometers an hour, which is a far cry from the 300 kilometers an hour that the Demon will do roughly. It's like 168 miles per hour. Also, one thing to mention, the Bugatti Chiron weighs 4,300 plus pounds, produces 1,479 horsepower. Now, to think about that, the Dodge Demon weighs 100 pounds less. So that just give you guys a comparison of how heavy the Chiron really is. Right behind me is the Range Rover Sport SVR, which has the 575 horsepower supercharged V8 co-engineered with Ford, as Ford owned Range Rover and Jaguar and Mercedes in the 90s. They co-designed this engine. The Range Rover Sport in this color is absolutely gorgeous. So many cars to look at, not enough time. The minutes are counting down. I believe I've got maybe 10 more minutes before they start wrapping up at the auto show. I wish I had more time here, I really do. It's fantastic, but I couldn't make it until late in the week. So right
right behind me we got the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, 505 horsepower. This right here is a monster. I can't wait to review the Stelvio. I got a few dealerships I'm talking to and hopefully I'll secure that in the coming weeks. I really want to drive this. 505 horsepower goes a long way in an SUV this small. It is so aggressively designed. And in its own way, it's better than the Range Rover Sport I just looked at. However, it really is a matter of taste, but the seats inside the Stelvio and Giulia are really not that good, at least not on the regular models. I haven't checked out the Quadrifoglio version yet, but it's right there. I wish I could get inside and sit in it. I don't think that's gonna happen though. So at first glance, the interior is definitely better than the base model that I saw before. And you can tell by looking right here in the seats, it's a suede, but it's still a little bit firm. I'm gonna sit in it to see exactly how it feels and to see if it feels better than the Julia I sat in in North Carolina. Now, with the fact that it has a quadrifolio, it comes with different packages. The Julia does have paddle shifters. The one I sat in last time did not. Also, the push button start is red. The other one that I sat in was black, so it's got more of a racing feel. The seats right now are definitely more comfortable than the base model Julia seats that I sat in last time. The interior has a red stitch trim on the dashboard. It's no longer that squishy plastic uh, that was on the other Julia. The dash is kind of like a suede or leather red stitch, so much better than the base model on the other Julia that I looked at. All the carbon fiber trim is similar, but the seats are definitely better. I can tell you guys for sure that this Julia is far better than the base model. It feels like a race car when I'm sitting in it right now. I definitely want to test drive it and review it. It is a fantastic vehicle. Everything about the gauge cluster and the push button start and the steering wheel makes you feel like you're in a race car and it definitely feels a lot better, like I said, than the other Julia I was sitting in. The interior is much, much improved over the base model. I guess I kind of jumped the gun when I said the interior wasn't of high quality, but it definitely is. The steering wheel is much better than the base model Julia I looked at last time with its Alcantara suede and leather red stitch steering wheel as well as carbon fiber trim. The Julia Quadrifoglio is definitely a high quality interior, much better than the other one like I was saying and even the door panels are much higher quality. You have leather and suede and red stitching, as well as tweeters in the door. Plenty of room in the back seats right here. The paddle shifters are absolutely huge, and when you turn the steering wheel, the paddle shifters do not move like they do on the Hellcat SRT Durango or any other vehicle I've driven for that matter. Most vehicles like Mercedes, Porsche, BMW, Lamborghini and Ferrari have the paddle shifters on the steering column or stock and not on the actual steering wheel itself. So this is a very nice design and it feels very high end. For $70,000, you absolutely cannot go wrong. I just might trade in my Hellcat for the Julie. I seriously am considering it. So the steering wheel is telescoping. It's not electronic, it's manual. As you can see, moving it up, down, or telescoping in and out. And then you just lock it where you want and the lever is on the bottom to lock it in place. But for the first time ever, let's go ahead and take a look at the engine, the Quadrifoglio engine. I haven't looked at it yet. Gonna be doing a review on it soon. So here you have it. 505 horsepower twin turbo V6. Well, that is gonna do it, guys. They are kicking everybody out. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed it. I know I took a long time to get out here the last day, and I got what I could in the three hours that I was here. I've been very busy with the move and, of course, trying to fit the YouTube channel in, but it was a lot of fun here to get all the footage I did for you guys, so I'm hoping you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell notification, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know what you guys think. Be sure to support the channel at drivewithdemons.com. It allows me to keep putting out the videos, buy your hoodie there, and support the channel there as well. Lots of merchandise coming to drivewaydemons.com. For all my returning subscribers, thank you so much for all your support and watching all my videos. And until the next video, I'm Corey with Driveway Demons. Remember, have fun, be safe. Gotta love walking the streets of New York, going back to pick up my car.
STI right there. Now I know a lot of people are probably going to be shocked when I say this, but I think that the Stelvio Quadrifoglio looks just as good, if not better than the Durango SRT in a lot of ways. And I think the Julia Quadrifoglio looks as good as my Hellcat, if not better in many ways as well. Alfa Romeo have done a fantastic job on the design of the cars. So I'm here to pick up my car at the valet. It is time to get out of here. There it is right there, sitting pretty. My Hellcat sitting there in the valet. It's time to go home. Gotta love that sound. Nothing better than cruising home in the Hellcat after a big auto show in New York. So I'm stopping at my favorite deli, Roosevelt's Deli, to get some cannoli. Right here at Roosevelt's Deli, the best cannoli if you ask me, that's where I'm gonna stop, pick some up, and then I'm gonna go get some pizza, of course. We're gonna get a cannoli. One regular, one chocolate. Yeah, I don't, like the ones. Oh, just the chocolate ones? I'll get the two chocolate ones. Those are the last ones, right? Best cannoli ever, see, right there. Oh, Look at that. A small camera, but we, you're doing big things. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I love Roosevelt's Deli, because you get fruit, sandwiches, muffins, all kinds of stuff. It's my favorite place to stop. I'll actually get two of those. I'll get your last two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that cake. I bet you I'm making all you guys hungry watching this. Black and white cookie, very famous in New Jersey. If you've never been to New Jersey or New York, black and white cookie is very famous. All right, I'm buying their last two cannolis. That's how good they are. Gonna give one to the wife. Now it's time to stop by Nanush, which is an Israeli restaurant, Mediterranean food. I love it. I'm gonna grab that and some pizza at La Traviata, which is my favorite pizza in all of Manhattan. There's also a spot over in Brooklyn you guys can check out called Roberta's Pizza. Very thin and very spicy. And it's great, absolutely great pizza. I've gotta park the Hellcat on the side of the street and walk to restaurants as there's fire hydrants there. You can't park, you get a ticket. get one uh, spinach and ricotta, one slice of pepperoni, and then one of the Sicilian, but I'm not gonna get them heated up. I gotta drive to take home, don't wanna burn them. I'll have to reheat them anyway. <laughs> so I got a Sicilian slice right there, ricotta and spinach, pepperoni. Gonna reheat it at the house, this way we don't burn it, reheat it twice, amazing pizza. So I say what's up to Traviata Pizza right here in New York. How you doing? So if you guys want to check out great pizza, La Traviata Pizza between Columbus and Broadway on 68th. Best pizza in all of Manhattan. I've lived here for like six years and it's the best. Thank you. You're very welcome guys. Take care. Thanks so much.